Welcome back, backers, supporters. This is Devo1099, Tom, coming uh, to you from Brooklyn with uh, Martin down in uh, Florida. How you doing, Martin? Pretty good. Ready for the next round of games after the international break. So this is literally backers after dark. I uh, am going through the slowest move ever in my new apartment. Um, haven't figured the lighting out yet, so... Uh, Apologies for the aesthetics. Hopefully, the uh, quality of our, uh, our discussion will uh, be brighter. Um, how have uh, how have you been faring? You got you had the international break. Did you play? Uh, did you play any of the uh, European qualifiers? I did. I started well, but faded. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you uh, you had let me know. I was I was uh, out of town most of the the week, but I think you had let me know that you uh, had had exercised some poor money management. Which I guess uh, <laughs> first of all, the European qualifier or the Euro qualifiers are uh, can be a little bit difficult just because you don't know who half the players are. But um, I yeah. actually did. Did quite well this week. I sat out last week. It sounds like last week was the one that uh, that got you. Yeah, it was a little. I played the game the day where there was too many big favorites, so you kind of had to just like it was kind of potluck as to who you picked, who was going to go off. Yeah. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong one. Yeah, it happens. I I was uh, pretty dependent on Croatia, and they got one goal. And then uh, Parisic got a, a yellow card in extra time for no reason, and and that cost me some money. But I did I actually did really well, so I can't complain. Um, though I do like to complain. Uh, me and Big O have that in common. You'll have to to bring some positivity to this. So, um, let's get to game week nine. Uh, coming after an international break, the uh, there's some pretty. Pretty decent matchups. I mean, there's always good matchups in the Premier League because we like the Premier League. Um, Spurs Liverpool, I think, uh, you know, leading off will not be part of uh, Monogol's big slate. Um, you know, so probably won't be a focus for many uh, fantasy managers. But um, I think, you know, with uh, Jurgen Klopp coming back, uh, you probably hate that a little bit as an Everton supporter. Uh, because he's pretty confident. Um, I don't worry about mid mid to lower table teams. I'm only worried about the the top teams. Yeah, I guess. Um, so uh, you know the Spurs are slightly favored at White Hart Lane. Um, you know I don't know that Klopp's going to come in and be able to put a stamp on the team in the first game. Um, but what in particular are you looking for from him in terms of his uh, lineup selection, in terms of his uh, style of play? You know, what players do you think will stand out more with him than they were previously? Um, you know, and and do you think the Spurs will, will handle him in this spot? I, I don't think he's really going to have too much effect so far. It will just be more like a mental effect rather than anything like the initial lift that new managers usually give. Um, I think it's going to be more, eventually it'll be more up-tempo game, using the wing-backs a lot more. And it'll be interesting to see if he can integrate Sturridge and Benteke into the same team. That's what I'm looking to see when they're both healthy, if they're the both healthy, that is. So if you, I mean, you know Dortmund fairly well. I don't know how uh, how well most of the uh, people watching this uh, know non Premier League, but um, who who are some players that were on Dortmund, and what you know, who would you compare them to? So, for instance, um, <clears throat> Royce is Coutinho going to be playing kind of the Royce role? Uh, that's a kind of that's a good kind of comparison, I would say. Um, he should have a good license to thrive under Klopp. But uh, it's just there's a lot of players who haven't really performed up to the potential. I mean, there's a lot of big names, but they're not really meshing. Mm -hmm. 
it's that's what I'm looking to see if he can actually get them integrated as a team rather than individual players. Yeah, I mean, it it would be interesting too. I mean, there's there's very few Premier League teams. I mean, I, I you know, thinking of it off the top of my head, you know, City and occasionally Chelsea, occasionally, um, you know, Everton can can pull it off. But but teams that fast break well um, are fairly rare in the Premier League, and that's something that is extremely common in in uh, Bundesliga, um, but doesn't always translate over. Um, you know, if they could get can continue off and running with Benteke and and Sturridge, that would certainly be interesting. You've got Klein, uh, Joe Gomez is now out for the season. Um, Danny Ings is now out for the season, which puts a lot more pressure on on uh, you know on Benteke and Sturridge uh, Sturridge to get fit, and on uh, I guess Moreno. Do you think do you think Moreno is the type of player that Klopp would trust? I mean, he's a horrendous defender, but um, does that matter? I don't think there are really many options up further than him, so I don't really know yeah. what else they could do. I mean, yeah, I mean, this this may be you know something where where Klopp tries to you know tries to get his image into the team as soon as possible, but it takes some time, and then you know they make moves in the the January window, and and you know. I don't even I don't I don't know that they have a shot at, at champions at this point. I mean I guess anybody really does if they get hot, but uh you know, making a manager change here is sort of a concession that it's gonna be difficult. But um I'm interested to see how they play. I, I think Klopp is good, you know. He tends to get a pass for last season, um, at least from you know, the statistic minded folks because they underperformed um, but their underlying numbers were still good, so people thought they were a little bit unlucky. And then, uh, uh, what's his name? Tuchel? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it, but he's come in and, and, and commanded a lot more out of them, but even, you know, recently they've had a couple strange draws, so, um, and got beat up by, by, uh, Bayern, but who doesn't? Um... So yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think Spurs Liverpool will be uh, interesting. We haven't touched on Spurs. Uh, you know, Eriksson's looked great lately. Kane, of course, uh, was fantastic in uh, for for England, um, but has been shaky at best for uh, for Tottenham. Um, I think I think what one one nil one one type game. Yeah, I think a one one is probably reasonable. Yeah. All right. Well, that game doesn't matter, so let's move on. Uh, first game I have listed is uh, our friends Chelsea hosting Villa. Um, we've we've been, I think, pretty spot on um, in identifying Chelsea. You know, beyond their name, beyond their uh, their uh, you know stars and talent and uh, and manager. All the numbers point to them just being a really poor defense right now. Um, that came to fruition again uh, against Southampton at the bridge. Uh, you know, they've had a couple weeks off. They've lost Ivanovic, which is probably a plus um, the way he was defending. Um, you know, Phil is not particularly tough. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, we're certainly not looking at their players, but, but, the bookies have already slotted Chelsea in as a as a heavy favorite here in this match. Um, you know, kind of just excusing them for the the first two months of the season. Um, are you prepared to do that? What are, what are you looking at here? When you say Villa is not particularly tough, I think there's jellyfish with more spine than some of these Villa players have. <laughs> well, so I think this is going to be. Kidding. I I'm looking at Begovic here yeah, as the goalkeeper that I want to use at his price. I mean, just Villa just can't score any goals and they're losing left, right, and center to yeah. anybody. Begovic uh, is 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 a nice price because he's been terrible, um, not just for Chelsea, but uh, for Bosnia as well. He uh, he gave up what was it two or three goals to Cyprus? Uh, did he? Did he keep a clean sheet against Wales? Uh, I, I mean, Wales didn't they too? No. 
<laughs> Wales only has one and a half players, but um, yeah. let me find him. I know that he's been negative. Like I think two out of the last three matches, he's. I'm pretty sure that Wales lost two 0 if he was playing. Okay. Um, regardless, uh, five five point four million, and has Villa at Stamford Bridge. Uh, if he's not the most popular keeper of the weekend, I would be pretty shocked. Um, you know, to me, for catch games, you plug him in and you move on. I don't. I don't think you need to think about it much longer. That being said. They have been pretty bad. But if there's anything that's going to cure that, it's going to be a home <laughs> game against Aston Villa. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And like I said, I will be playing him. Uh, I do think there's plenty of uh, benefit to taking a shot on, you know, some of the other keepers we'll get to later in, uh, you know, more of a GPP contest just because, you know, the problems that they have are not things that get cured overnight. And, you know, giving up three goals to Southampton is not the worst thing you could do, but in the manner that it was done, it's pretty embarrassing. Um, you know, I, I think in a GPP, I might, well, we'll get to it, but, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's it's warranted. His, his negative value is warranted. He did have a clean sheet against Wales. Um but, you know, he struggled against Newcastle, struggled against Porto, struggled against Southampton, and then just got rung up by Cyprus. So not the uh, best run of form for Begovic, but, um, you know, I think the lack of quality on, on Villa wins out here. Um, and, you know, I, don't, I, I just can't see Chelsea doing this all season. So when we start to see signs of them turning it around, I'm sure we're going to jump back on board. Um so moving away from Begovic, uh, the rest of the team is in play as well. Uh, they have to be one of the top couple uh, attacks that you're looking at. Do you trust Diego Costa? He's a nice price. Um, didn't have to play in internationals because his manager doesn't like him anymore after his behavior against Arsenal. Uh, what do you think? Would you, would you roster uh, or would you use him in your lineup, Costa? Oh, um, it's not an automatic anymore. It, it's something to think about because he's just the way he plays. He's walking that tightrope, always between controlled aggression and just losing the plot. So, <laughs> I mean, there should be opportunities there in this game at a relatively good price. I mean, he wouldn't be an automatic for me, but. If I was making multiple teams, he would be someone I would use a couple of times, maybe. Yeah. He's he's 7.2. Pedro's 5.5. Uh, Pedro? Pedro is just... He's done nothing since... what The first game, he did something. Yeah. And since then, he's even at that price, it's, he's still paying 5.5 for nothing, it seems. Yeah, he's, he's confusing. Um... I mean, this is one of those, those situations. I mean, he's averaging 5.2 points on the season with Chelsea, but he had 13 in the first game. Um, you know, I, I still think I would probably use him. Um, in a cash game, he may be you know, slightly advantageous to Casa because he doesn't carry the yellow card and red card risk. Um, Costa being more likely to score, uh, but both th those are really, really solid prices for uh, players with their their odds to score and, and with their quality. So um, I could see potentially using one or both in in a cash game at, at forward, just because this is a kind of a strange week and and some of the other the prices on on you know the Arsenal strikers, for instance, on Pella. Um, they're not great, and uh, you know, Bonnie and Sterling you could look at on uh, on City, but um, these these are the cheapest of all of those names that I that I mentioned, and, and right up there in terms of uh, in terms of potential output. So um, I'll be looking at, at those two guys. Uh, midfield, what do you make of Azard right now? 
you think at thirteen point eight is is he worth uh, worth a look? I'll I'll be using him in some of my teams. So I think he's been pretty. He's been playing pretty decent for Belgium, I think. So um, he's he has to carry that form over to the Premier League sometime. I mean, at the moment he's being outperformed by William offensively in a lot less time on the field. William has produced more offensively than Hazard. So, but I mean, if they, I mean, William's been doing it mostly on spot kicks, right? I mean, yeah. Well, free kicks. Yeah. But still, I mean, doesn't matter where the goals are coming from. I mean, but right. it's, he just needs to step it up. I mean, something's not right with him in the Premier League this year. But uh, the only, they're not going to turn it around unless he's on top of his game, pretty much. Yeah, I think that, that to not use Azard in this match would be uh, to assume that he has an injury that he's hiding, and I think that that would be a silly assumption considering he's playing for Belgium and playing 90 minutes. Um, you know, he had the one uh, penalty that he blew over the net and then didn't get to take the second one um, in Champions League. Uh, but other than that, I, 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 you know, I think it's I think it's probably just a good thing that his price has come down from 15 million plus. And uh, if you're not going to use him at – home against uh, Villa, then you better have a pretty good idea that he's uh, he's got issues because this is about as good a matchup as it'll be. Um, so the defenders, so so Ivanovic is out. Um, Cahill seems to be uh, on Mourinho's bad side. Uh, Terry almost has to start. Um, and then you've got it's Billy Cueta, Zuma, and Baba Raman. What, how do you anticipate all that shaking out? I'm looking at Zuma on my teams, I think. Rahman seems pretty, a little expensive for someone who's not really played. I mean, it's not really that friendly a price. Yeah. Whereas Zuma has, he's looked solid, and you got to give his chances you're going to get of a clean sheet in this game. So that would probably be the player that I would be looking at though I guess Aspelaqueda offers something going forward but they're not really producing offensively any of their defenders so I don't really looking at him getting an assist or a goal. Yeah. So I'd probably just say I would use maybe Begovic and Zuma. Yeah. I I, I think that uh, that that's probably fair, you know, considering they definitely could concede um, you don't want to be going all in on Chelsea unless it's in a, a GPP. But um, all right, I think we've we've spent more than enough time on on Chelsea. Uh, we can skip over Villa. Um, let's move to uh, Selhurst Park. Palace hosting West Ham. Um, Palace has been pretty decent, a little up and down, but pretty decent overall. Uh, most of their uh, most of their Points are coming from their midfield. Their goals are coming from their midfield. It's it's a little bit difficult to identify which one of their midfielders is is going to score or assist. Um, you know, if you've got Punchin at seven point eight, Kabay at six point four, Velasquez at six point one, and Zaha at five point nine, uh, I think I know which direction you'd go, but. Let's hear it from from you. I like Kabay. Correct. <laughs> uh, he's been great. He's been yeah, I mean, sorry. I mean, if you look at his numbers overall, he's producing. He can do everything. He gets PKs, free kicks. He's passing the ball a lot. He's a creator. I mean, he's him and Punchin are the only one that have played pretty much maximum minutes as well. So. The other, the other midfielders are kind of, you're not sure how many minutes they're going to play. So, but yeah, if I was picking the top two, it'd be Kabaya then Punchin. I think that's fair. Uh, I, I, I like Blasier's game probably the most from a fantasy standpoint, but he's, he's just a little bit off uh, this year from from a number standpoint. 
Um, Hennessy is decent, but he's 8.2, so I don't see that happening. Um, what about Gale? Gale's at 7.6, so right in, in kind of the Diego Costa range. Um, hasn't quite put it together here, but I tend to like him. Um, you know, he's got to start for whatever reason. They, Pardue hasn't given Bamford a, a shot yet. Um, you know, those are their, their two options left, I guess, or Wickham, but I think he's hurt, right? Yeah, he had a slight knock, I think, on his ribs or something. Yeah. Um, do you like you like Gale? Uh, it seems to be a cursed position for them. Um, he did score the hat-trick in the Carlin Cup, but the one start he then had after that, he didn't really get, do anything. Though, if you look at their forwards, they've really produced nothing all season. Yeah. I mean, it's, and then maybe they play with a false nine. I don't know. Watch sometime. That's well. Yeah, it's funny. Is is Gale has been great in uh, <laughs> in I guess either Capital One or FA Cup games. He he had a hat trick in one and scored a goal in the other, um, but not really putting it together in Premier League matches. And then they let Murray go, and he scores in his first game for for Bournemouth, where they much needed um, replacing Wilson. Um, yeah, I, I think Gale, you know, I, I, he's a player I would use in, in a GPP if I had several teams, but uh, certainly too risky for cash. Um, what about it? You, would you look at, at Suarez as a, as a defender? Um, he's a reasonable. I mean, he's not one of my top options but he'd be like a second tier kind of player if you were messing around with the gpp team yeah you know, you'd use him cash but i mean if you were trying to if you were to use hennessy then you could use Spare. yeah it would just be it would be a strong bet against the uh the theory that west ham is a great away team because they've had great away results in four or five matches or whatever this year um which is a nice transition to West Ham. Um, I've seen a lot uh, of of love for Paye. Um, Fourteen point one million away is really not attractive to me at all. I really like him. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm fairly consistent with that. But that just that doesn't seem like a, a great option when when Azard is is less expensive. Um, Sacco, 8.2. Moses, 7.9. Uh, how do you feel about West Ham this week? Well, I, don't think they, I think they're going to lose, so I wouldn't be over-investing in them. Um, I, a lot of people give them a lot of, like you said, a lot of love, but if they're not playing that, the top-tier teams, then they're struggling. And you wouldn't exactly say Crystal Palace are not, though they're high up in the league they're not really considered one of the top tier teams so i don't know if there's something mentally wrong with west ham where they can't get into games with the lower teams but or teams that are expected to beat or at least be on even footing with but they just seem to really struggle in those games like they were really lucky against sunderland until lens got sent off so i don't know they seem to Still defensively, there's a lot of question marks. Yeah, I, mistakes. I I, just, I don't like them. I think uh, I think even the, the matches that they won, I think they got a little bit lucky. They got a you know an early goal on their first or second shot on target, and uh, and and they, look, they played well from there. You know, they they certainly earned victories. But you know, to say that that if they went and played a city again. Uh, that they could win that. I just, I don't see that happening. If you looked at it and they were just under assault the entire second half and then, and they held on. Um, yeah, I'd be looking mostly at palace in that match. And, and if West Ham beats me because they're a great away team, uh, they beat me and I'll, and I'll still bet against them next time. Um, I'm going to let you handle this next match because I, uh, actually didn't write down a single player from it. Uh, Everton hosting Manchester United. Mm. So 
it should be a close game, I think. Man United coming off the beatdown that Arsenal inflicted upon them. Everton have been pretty solid. They've not lost for a while without sparkling too much. Um, two of the form players in the Premier League, probably in Lukaku and Barkley, are pretty, they should cause problems to Man United. Um, kind of see it. I want to say Everton's going to win, but I'm kind of saying it's, I think it's going to be like a 1 1 draw. Kind of like, well, obviously, Martial still real cheap price, 5 million. So, I mean, you got to say he's probably going to be pretty popular. Um, Everton pretty solid defensively. Coleman should be back. Gee, he's still, he's under six still? Five million. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. So it's still a gimme. Even like he's, I mean, he doesn't do much when he doesn't score, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, yeah, it's, that's fair. And you're just kind of, it's not even a gamble at five million just for like a, for his chance of scoring, then that's just ridiculous still. Yeah, I, it's a mistake. I mean, he's, he's, there's no reason he shouldn't be at least seven or eight million. Um, you know, I don't know what, what their algorithm is doing that is causing this, I guess. I mean, even looking at his Monaco record, he, he was fine. You know, he scored a few goals here and there. So, I don't know. I guess it is what it is. Um, I guess I would take him in GPPs. I probably wouldn't want to use a forward spot on him in, in, uh, in the cash game just because I don't think that he has great shot, a great chance of scoring uh, away here. And... Um, I just wouldn't want to use a forward spot up on him because I think there's much better options. So even if he was a discount, and I don't think money's too tight. You know, I like Azard at, at 13.8, but I mean, is I don't really have many other players that I'm looking at that are over 10 million. Uh, KD or KDB, of course, but we're about to get to them. Um, I guess we'll see how it shakes out. You know, if you really need. Savings, he's not a bad option. He sh probably shouldn't kill you at $5 million. He can't really kill you at $5 million. It would just be the opportunity cost of using a forward position uh, on him. And then a bunch of other – I mean, I would rather use Pedro at 5.5 .5 than, than him at $5 million. But um, all right, that, the, the focus, especially after their thrashing of uh, Newcastle right before the break is – going to be Manchester City, but it's going to be a bit of a skeleton unit for them. Um, you know, missing their two highest profile players in, in Aguero and Silva. Um, though uh, Kevin De Bruyne is making a strong case to uh, be right up there in consideration with those two. Um, there's the forgotten man, uh, Raheem Sterling, who is probably pretty happy not to have uh, much attention on him these days. Um, Wilford Bonney, who, uh, you know, chased the money instead of uh, actually getting to play a lot like he was at Swansea. Um, so those two guys should be focuses. Novice should play. Um, I would love to see Ian Nacho here. You know, if they decided they wanted to rest Bonnie or something, I don't know. Rest him wow. from what? Well, rest him. We're in Champions League coming up right in a couple days later, right? So He's that's not, a bigger match than than them having to try to hold off a, a promoted team, I would think. Um, I don't think it'll happen. I think Bonnie starts. But who are you looking at here? Are, are you going to take those guys on your cash team? Are Are you looking at defenders? Hart? I think you pretty much have to take Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. I mean, the way he's playing in international and club football right now, he's probably one of the top five, ten players in the world on form currently. Um, so that, and then I, I guess Boney is going to have opportunities to score. I mean, he hasn't really had a run of games so all to see how he could play. I mean, he looks 
okay when everybody has played to me. It's not like Remy and Falcao for Chelsea look clueless. He actually can looks like he did, he could potentially score at least. Yeah, it's funny, and I don't want to use an American sport example, but I will. Um, it reminds me by the time Bonnie gets in these matches, it's like four or five nothing, and and. Uh, and City's rolling or whatever it is when he's playing. And it, and it looks like they're trying to get him the ball. Like he's the, the walk-on basketball player for a college team, which is probably the most irrelevant uh, metaphor I could use for a UK audience. But it just looks like they're really forcing the ball to him, trying to like, come on, Wilfred, get a goal, get a goal. And he just kind of like will blow one wide or, or trip over the ball. It's, it's a little bit comical. I think he's a good player, but so – Brian Scalabrini is what you're saying. What's that? It's like the Brian Scalabrini of Man City, maybe. <laughs> yeah, another reference. No, uh, no, uh, none of our UK uh, watchers are going to get. But yeah, um, uh, Zabaleta should be starting. Uh, Kolarov may or may not have a knock. I think he probably plays. Um, Company is still relatively cheap and, and play for Belgium. I think those are all decent options. Yeah. I think I focus more on the attacking side. I think Navis at 8.4. Um, with the, you know, I think he's almost has to play close to 90 minutes here. Uh, Nasri's out. Um, you know, Silva's out. So, you know, I think he gets close to 90. Uh, Sterling, who has been more or less incapable of playing 90, still may have to do that. And I think he, he has one goal on the season. Um, and, you know, he should have had one earlier early in the season. He played very well in, in uh, matches leading up in the preseason, but he, he's kind of disappeared the last, I don't know, three, four, five matches. What do you think is going on there? He's a little fish in a big pond now. <laughs> so he's kind of getting overshadowed, and I think he likes being the center of attention. So maybe his ego is taking a beating. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 like the fourth or fifth option there now. Um, and it's showing because he, he's really – he's looked pretty bad. I, I still think he's a decent player, but for uh, De Bruyne to walk into this team – uh, late into the the season after it started, and uh, be able to turn it around like this, and and be shifted around the formation, and, and to produce from everywhere, it, it it does it makes Sterling look uh, a little bit childish and and young and uh, ineffective. But um, nine point six million forward in a match where they should uh, score a few goals, I'm not totally opposed to to giving him a run out when. Um, I'm not sure how effective Bonnie is, you know, and uh, you know, it might this might be an opportunity for him to to step up and and you know, no Silva, no Aguero, he he's going to be commanding more touches. De Bruyne may try to get him more involved. So, um, given the option between Sterling at nine point six and Bonnie at eight point four, which way would you go, Bonnie? I just think there's more chance that he will score than Sterling. Yeah. And Sterling played for Liverpool, so we got to mark him down a bit further for that. I think... Uh... <laughs> no, I just don't think... Like you said, Sterling doesn't just seem to be quite with it mentally. So I think yeah. one of those players that needs to be mentally in tune to produce. Right. He's, so, he's generated seven shots on target in seven matches. Um, Fifteen fouls in seven matches would be pretty good, except... Uh, Mondegol cut those in half. Um, so he's averaging 6.76 points, Mondegol points per game. Mm. I mean, that's, yeah. He scored against Estonia uh, in internationals. He's He scored, last scored for City against Sunderland, which I don't even know if that counts. Uh, I guess, oh, so he, wait, does he have... Oh, that wasn't – ah, that was uh, Capital One Cup, I believe. So he has a goal and assist in, in Premier League play. But 
I think he'd be t a tough guy to use in a cash game, but I, I'm not opposed to using him in a healthy amount of GPP uh, lineups. I, I think he could he could do just fine, um, and he could he could definitely score a goal or two. He's capable. He's a, he's been a questionable finisher his whole career, but um, I don't know. Probably talked about him enough. Uh, Bournemouth, would you bother? I think they're in a bit of trouble. They've lost Wilson. They've lost their captain now for a long time. Elphick. Um, so, no. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's pretty much... I think you'd just be looking to use a lot of City in this yeah. game. If you really wanted to have some fun, you could hope that uh, Murray got the goal that, you know, pulled one back to make it 4-1 at the, you know... 77th minute or something, but that that seems like a pretty long punt. Or he could miss another penalty. Uh, yeah, that's painful on Mondo. Negative points from your forward. Uh, all right. Uh, I think you pegged this one as potentially the highest scoring match of the weekend. Uh. We're going to St. Mary's Southampton hosting Leicester. Uh, Southampton's pulled it together a little bit. The the Chelsea match, um, since we're still counting Chelsea as a good team, was an impressive performance. Um, Leicester is the type of team that they should be able to handle, and the bookies tend to agree with that. What what uh, what are you looking at for the Saints? Just I, I like. Mane, though he did, I'm just, I'm just a little worried that he played international midweek, midweek for Senegal. So it's kind of something to watch. Um, and he's 14.1 million, which is. But that doesn't worry me so much. With the, I think he could have a pretty high potential return. If not him, then you can, get Tadic, you can get Tadic for half the price. Right, but uh, Tadic is kind of a little mercurial. But yeah, I, I would I could potentially use both of them. Then Pella, I he's just whenever you use him, he won't score, and then he'll score a couple of goals in a row, and then he won't score again. So you won't use him, and then he'll score again. So yeah, I had I was I think I wrote, I wrote something to that effect on on Twitter. He's he's been a favorite of ours, and uh, I think he he almost never comes through in the matches where. You expect him to, and but then he'll he'll score in tougher matches. So um, I think that's probably more random than anything because that certainly is illogical. Um, but now he's nine point six million, so it's not like you're getting the uh, the old Pella discount for. You know, he was down around six million last year for much of the season, towards the second half. But um, any any anybody in so the two guys. So there's Tadic, um, and then there's Stephen Davis and uh, James Ward Prowse. Um, they've been pretty decent. Davis scored against Chelsea, um, and and actually has produced fairly well. He's actually created a, a fair amount of chances, considering that I don't think that we've discussed him in any game week. Um, I think he could be a, a catch or Definitely GPP. Op well, the problem is his upside's not particularly great. Um, is he? Is he even remotely on your radar? Is he scored two goals for Northern Ireland in internationals? Yeah, I, I think. Know. I don't know. I'm, a left field pick there. I mean, I mean, if fine, he comes, he's, I guess playing right, he's playing right behind Pella, though. I mean, if it comes off, you'll probably be in the one percent that are picking him, so it could be a a differential, I guess. But he's not really. There's too many better options in my eyes. I mean, like you said, you're not struggling for money, so there's not really any need to dig too deep unless you're making multiple teams, and then you can mess around a little bit. Yeah, this this is this would be an example of uh, of trying to get too clever. Um. I guess I just I, I like to highlight the fact that I, I mean I used him as a punt on DraftKings last season quite a bit just because he was the 
the cheapest price and he almost never came through. He didn't kill you, but he almost never came through. And now he's, and he's being relied on as, as a more, uh, central focus of their attack. And, you know, he's getting a, a decent amount of touches in the final third. And I, I just think someone to keep an eye on, uh, you know, I tend to agree that it's a reach. Um, it's a reach here. So I'll let it slide. Um, Stecklenburg is 4.9, Van Dyke is 5.2, Font is 6.7, Bertrand 6.2. Those are all extremely reasonable if you think Leicester is a mirage uh, and won't score, but that hasn't been a very good bet this season. Uh, Mahrez, mysteriously, uh, after being probably the most informed player in the Premier League, did not start last match. Um, Fardy has been... Uh, has been fantastic. Um, would you take either of those in cash or GPPs? I mean, that's solid. I mean, I think there's going to be goals in this game. So, I mean, they're the most likely source of goals for Leicester. I mean, they wouldn't be my first choices, but they'd be secondary options, I'd say. Just, just I mean, road teams, there's a lot of favorite home teams, big favorite home teams, but I mean, they, 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 they could give you something. It's just, do you think he's going to keep scoring? Well, he is, I mean, his run's got to end sometimes. So it's like, he's just going to, are you going to keep, are you going to get off the train before it stops? Or, you never know. It's like, well, that's going to be, that's going to be the same argument, uh, with a gala, um, both in tough matches. But both are are you know in great form. I I, I I personally I'm almost always gonna fade somebody. Just be, it, being hot doesn't mean anything really to me, um, unless somebody can show me the the numbers that back it up. But um, I'm not taking Barty here. I'm not taking Mares probably either, just because I, I there's four spots in midfield and I like four players at least better. Um, and I just, I think Southampton is, they had some struggles early in the season, but I think they've sort of uh, steadied themselves and they tend to play pretty organized um, and they're at home. So yeah. All right. Let's go to the most boring match of the, uh, the week. West Brom and Sunderland. Um, you got anything here? Mm. Uh, West Brom should win. I mean, if they're not winning this, they're going to be in trouble because this is like a gimme game for them. Though, I mean, I guess Big Sam, the savior, is in at Sunderland now, so everything's going to change, right? Yeah, against the savior Pulis at West Brom. Two old school English managers. Yeah. So, yeah, you're pretty much going to see a pretty dour game. Yeah, but the the prices for West Brom uh, reflect, you know, how bad they have played. Um, but they don't reflect the fact that they're playing Sunderland now. So, um, Berahino's scoring record at home is actually very good. It's the only place he can score. He's only $6.9 million. Uh, I think Dawson's reasonable at 6.9. Chester's just 5.2. Uh, your man Rondon, if he is back fit from internationals, is 5.1. And my hill, 6.7. Those are the, the players I wrote down. Those are all very reasonably priced. Um, is there anybody else you have your eye on? Or would you take any of those players? I mean... Better in your offers a fair chance to score penalty at least. Um, a decent chance of a clean sheet and a win, I'd say, for the goalkeeper defense. Mm, I don't see Sunderland scoring more than one, especially with Lens suspended. Right. Um, and Villa has a little knock, so he's probably their next best player. So it just doesn't. This is not too much to like about Sunderland. I mean, 
they have they played decently last week and then they just threw it away. I mean, in the last game before the international break against West Ham, but yeah. they just shoot themselves in the foot too many times. They 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 can't stop goals going in. So it's yeah. I don't. I don't. I mean, we're not. We're certainly not playing Sunderland. Like, like home. You know, if, I mean, there's a, there should be if West Brom were. If West Brom play fifty percent, they should win like a goal or two. I'd say. Yeah. So I mean, you got to. I mean, the most likely source may be Morrison and Barahino. I'd say. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting though to see what sort of uh, what sort of formation uh, or what what players he's using that's different um, for Big Sam, and you know we can learn a little bit about Sunderland and. and potentially use some of those players when they're at home and better matchups later on. So um, like our, our, our man Yedlin from the U S national team, who's not a good football player, but he's fast, um, which I've mentioned because that's all he has. Uh, all right. The last match of the Saturday slate, the uh, later match is Watford hosting Arsenal. Um, you know, Arsenal has been Arsenal to a T this season, opening with a, a stunning loss to West Ham, um, coming back and playing well, then just totally imploding in Champions League to the point where you wonder how Wenger has a job, and then immediately coming back and uh, just ending the game against United in the first uh what is it, like 25 minutes or something like that? Um, can you predict which Arsenal team will show up and would you play pay their inflated prices? I think they should win. I think it'll be pretty a tight-ish game, though. I'm, I'm not sure I want to pay top dollar, though, for... I just don't know if they're going to play Sanchez. That's what worries me. After his international, <clears throat> where he was playing the full two two full games and then oh, so it's this might be a good spot for them to throw Giroud back in. Um, yeah, Giroud at seven five would would interest me. He scored twice in uh, internationals. Um, but can you predict? It? It's a late game, so you know can't, you can't tell. Yeah, and I, word ahead. I mean, it's kind of risky. Absolutely. I mean, the only one I'd feel safe about using is Walcott, probably. I'm pretty sure he's going to play because he only played the one, one yeah, for England. He's 13.2 million as a striker, though. I mean, I didn't say I would use him. That's the only one I'm sure is going to play, is what I'm saying. Gosh. Of the three of them. So. Calm down. <laughs> um. Yeah, I no, I mean, I, you know, I like Walcott, and, and I think he's got pretty good goal odds. But that just, I mean, that's your you need a goal at that rate, and I don't know if he's that uh, that likely to score. Maybe uh, I think he's more fifty fifty than uh, than that. But um, yeah, I, I think Alexis would be tough at twelve point four. Uh, Ozil at 11-8. Um, they should have, you know, Watford's not very good in possession, so they should have a good bit of the ball, which helps a player like Ozil um, if he can thread some passes and and pile up some uh, completed passes. Um, I could see using him. I, I you know, I, I, I want at least a piece of the Arsenal attack. Um but Ramsey also looked good in internationals for Wales. He was, he's 10.4. Uh, Bellerin, I'm not really sure what's going on with him. Uh, he hasn't done much all year. He's 8.2. And here's, here's a player I'm going to read off for you. Uh, tell, me, tell me the number that's out of place here. Five starts this season. 6.59. 
8.71, negative 3.87, 8.29. Do you know who I'm talking about? Very high profile Arsenal incident. Oh, come on. Check. Gabriel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So his obviously his red card, he was negative 3.87. Other than that, he's had over six and a half points. He's 7.2 million. And they have a pretty darn good chance at a clean sheet. So he's done well with, you know, he's done well with tackles. He's done well with interceptions. And, uh, and I think that I don't see how they would risk uh, Koscielny, even if they decide that he's fit to go, just because it, you know, it's a match. Well, I don't know. I, I can never tell with with uh, Wenger, but he's doubtful for this match. It doesn't make sense for him to go if they've got Murtisacker and um, and Gabriel. So um, I think Gabriel could be a very sneaky play. Um, I don't know. That's that's my uh, my thoughts on that. Um, he's he's they've kept they've kept a clean sheet four out of the five matches he's played, and then the one they didn't was the one he got sent off. So, um, so that might inflate those numbers a little bit, but I don't mind him at seven point two. Um. All right, let's briefly run over the uh, Sunday and Monday matches. Uh, not particularly interesting, so Monagol was was happy to leave them out. Um, you've got Newcastle hosting Norwich. Um, you know Newcastle's been been dreadful. Uh, Norwich kind of has fallen off a bit themselves. Um, and may not be as even as good as as they've performed. How about my boy Mitrovic here? So 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 He's so cheap. Um, Wijnaldum could be okay. Yeah, I'm not. Um, who's a uh, who's gonna be uh, in net for Newcastle with Cruel out for the season? Um, aren't both of their goalkeepers injured? Like the first two goalkeepers are injured, aren't they? I thought. So I don't even know who this next up is. Yeah. So yeah, this opportunity <laughs> to exploit, especially when McLaren saying Cruel is worth eighteen to twenty points. <laughs> is it? It's Elliot. Could be. I think it's Elliot. Um. Yeah, I mean, Norwich, at some point, they've got to give up on Jerome. Maybe this is the, the week that that happens. Um, if that happens and you're just doing the Sunday-Monday slate, uh, I think that you're almost, you almost have to look at Mbakani. Um Whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> it's not, not a good game. Uh, Swansea-Stoke is better. Uh, Swansea... Was everyone's uh, darling early in the season? Um, you know, beating Chelsea at the time seemed like a, a massive win. Um, some of the shine has come off that, and some of the shine has come off uh, Swansea. But they are favored here. Stoke's been playing a little bit better. Um, what do you see happening? Didn't they tie Chelsea at the beginning of the season? Sorry, is that what happened? United. Okay. Sorry, I hate to correct you, but no, no, no I, please. Um, yeah, I don't know. They just, they just seem to have lost some continuity. Gomez has kind of looked. He's not scoring. He just doesn't offer you. He's just not offering much to the team. Um, I don't know. I don't know why Montero seems to be in and out. But he seems to be the most creative player still, or like threading in. So. It's just, uh, it's difficult to put a finger at. They're just letting in some silly goals. Um, 
they just don't seem like the same team they did at the beginning of the season. I mean, they seem like that before it seemed like the team was more than the sum of the parts, but now it just seems the other way around where they're just not meshing as well as they were. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, what they, whether they're going to keep Gomez. They have the Ada guy. I don't know. I've not really seen much of him though, whether he's any good. So, but I don't think he's giving up on, on Gomez at this point. Um, but yeah, I do think that they're they need a little they need a win pretty badly. Um, and I think they you know they could get one here. It, it, Stoke so Doof uh, I guess lost his mother, which is horrible, um, and may not be playing. Uh, he's not playing. They said. Okay. Um, condolences to him. That's terrible. And then. So I guess what Arnautovic and Shakiri and is Bo, does Bojan play striker or Crouch? They can't play Crouch the whole game, can they? Mm, no, probably not. Maybe Walters could go up front. He right. plays. Yeah, he'll definitely play up front. You're right. So yeah, I mean Arnautovic has been on. He was on fire for Austria. In this break, and he had he was solid the last couple of games before the break as well. So, I mean, he looks he he can really look good, and then he just has a couple of games you'll use him, and he'll get you like literally nothing. He's like one of those players, but I mean, that I just think Swansea will just have a little too much. I mean, it's amazing to me that Ayu is a I don't think he's very tall, is he? I think he has the most headed attempts on goal. He's yeah, like, he's good at getting in position. He gets a lot of yeah. He's very opportunist. He's kind of like Tim Cahill, I would say, with his head in prowess. Cahill was just not a very tall guy, but he could he got up very well and got a lot of headed goals. So I kind of equate him to that kind of a player. Yeah, I, I like I like IU. He's I think he's been good. He's he's uh you know. What's the term you guys use? Fox in the box or something? He's just, he's always around the ball. He's, he's good at cleaning up. And I think that they're going to have, you know, we, we aren't too high on the Stoke defense. I think Butlin's been pretty good. Um, but I was great for Marseille and, and I don't know, or Marseille. Uh, looking at pricing for the Sunday, Monday slate, uh, you can have whoever you want. So it's just a matter of, uh, of picking the right eleven and you know the right four Swansea players, the right probably three Newcastle, two Norwich, and maybe two Stoke, something like that. Um, that'll be the that'll be uh, the contest, which is a bit of a coin flip. So we probably won't play those. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, it does a pretty good job here. Setting things up um, should be a pretty interesting week. A lot of Chelsea, a lot of City. It's like uh, just like you'd imagine at the start of the season with some Arsenal sprinkled in. But um, getting more creative than that will be uh, will be big, and and that's where you know Palace and uh, maybe United, and uh, if you can pick Southampton correctly, West Brom if they can actually score. Um, those will be the differentials in, in GPPs and you'll stick to kind of the big names in cash because it's not going to be hard to uh, just squeeze them into the budget. So, um, Martin, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, yeah. Viewers, thanks for uh, dealing with uh, backers after dark here. Um, I promise to eventually have uh, fully moved in and, and have a, a slightly better setup here. Um, Best of luck to everyone. If you have any questions, we're available on Twitter, uh, FF Backers, and Martin is at WowCow77. Um, we'll see you next week. Good luck. Thanks.